another episode of Twin Tier Football alongside Kevin Case. I'm Jenna Harner. Rain, sleet, wind, or snow. Kev, New Yorkers take their high school football pretty seriously. I am soggy. <laughs> I am cold. But I'm ready to talk football. Let's do it. I think my socks are still damp. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight's first game features a former state champ as the underdogs. It was just a little bit muddy here in Whoa. Groton. Oof, the Indians with a chance to take down the defending state champ, Tioga Tigers. Late in the first, Groton marched all the way to the six yard line and Damian Shoemaker dives into the end zone. He makes a big play, so Groton, they take a six to nothing lead. Look, Tioga's looking for the answer. The handoff to Max Johnson even faked me out a little bit there. Johnson, he's going to take it 30 yards to the house. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have a tie ball game. The two point conversion would hold, so the Tigers went up eight to six in the second half. Now this may look like a little bit of deja vu. Groton gives it to Dylan Cooper. He finds some running room and there is no one stopping him. So how about a 40 yard touchdown run just a couple of plays later? Groton gets back the lead. They're up 12 to six. The Tigers, they march themselves up the field. Second and goal on the third yard line. Looks like it'll be a quick handoff up the middle. Instead, it's one outside to Tyler Whitmore. Kids and making big plays all season long. Tayo gets the lead back. They'd go into the half up 16 to 14, but a late score for Groton would seal it. And the Indians take down the defending state champs in the sectional quarterfinals 22 to 16. Well, Jenna, over at Waverly High School, the Wolverines weren't playing in a playoff game tonight, but they might as well have been. Mm -hmm. Waverly and its opponent, Owego, came into tonight's game with identical division records, meaning the winner of tonight's game would go to the playoffs, while the loser, done for the season. Oof. Yeah, so high stakes in this one. Lots of umbrellas in the stands at Waverly Memorial Stadium. Heck, I wish I had had one on the sidelines. <laughs> we picked this one up first quarter. Owego strikes first. Luke Kabbalah takes the handoff and rolls on into the end zone for the seven yard score. Extra point was no good though, so we go up six to nothing. Next drive, Waverly on the move. Gavin Judson fakes the handoff, floats this one out, and look out, here comes Hunter Bodon into your living room. Catch was good. Almost Wolverines took you out. Move, I know he did, moves to the Owego 22 yard line. A couple plays later, third and six, Judson offs a perfect pass to Garrett Sutrick for the 18 yard touchdown. Extra point was true. Wolverines take a one point lead. Second quarter now, two minutes left in the half. Judson going to the air again, rolling to his right this time. He's looking for Brendan Stillman, but he finds Owego's Micah Marshall instead. Indians take over in Wolverines territory, but the Waverly defense, it would step up. Dustin Dan here on the draw for Owego, but Braden Rice, he's blowing that play up Oof. all day. Rice was flying to the ball all night long. Waverly led 7-6 at half, but Owego goes on to win this one 22-7. The Indians advanced to the Section 4 playoffs. So then it was over to Ithaca, the Little Red, battling the Hawks of Corning for a spot in the Section 4 Class AA playoffs. Corning holding a 6-0 lead. Kean Collins on the rollout. He's going to connect with Darren Taylor. The Hawks have a first down and then some, but they were forced to punt on that drive. Ithaca driving now. Jordan Ayers takes the snap. Flag is down, so it's a free play. Kid's got some room to run. He'll take it. He gains a couple yards out of the backfield there. So replay on that down. Kyrie Brown, he's going to get the ball doing what he's done all season long. A nice pickup for the senior running back. First down, little red. Ayers on the snap looking for the screen, but Corning's defense is just stifling. Three Hawks come flying out, giving Ayers no room. They record the sack. And here's the play of the night, folks. Keen Collins to Jason Rodriguez for a 43-yard touchdown wow. run. Oof, look at him. Got the moves. Got the, finds the inside the lane moves. there. There's no one to stop him. He dives his way into the end zone. Wow. Touchdown, Hawks. This would be how we would end it. Corning shuts out Ithaca 12-0. They're taking home a playoff spot as well. Final football highlight tonight. We're already in the playoffs here. Notre Dame in the Class D sectional playoffs against Unitego Franklin. Crusaders looking to take an early lead here, but Gary Rauper's pass intercepted by Cooper Thayer. Thayer's got some room, too. He rumbles deep into Notre Dame territory, and that would set up this. Zach Youngs taking the handoff, galloping in for the score. Spartans take a 7-0 lead. Skip a little bit ahead now. Notre Dame up 8-7 at this point. Mike Rose going to change that, though. Rose has a head of steam and a nose to the end zone on this one. Spartans take the lead and don't look back. They beat Notre Dame 44-14. 
So we're just going to take a look at some other area scores. Spencer Burnett and Kander defeated Delhi Charlotte Valley 35 to 12. They continue on their successful season, but there were some games today that were postponed. Lots of Pennsylvania area teams. Wellsboro versus Wild Losing, Toganic at Tawanda, North End Mansfield versus Troy, Athens versus Canton, and finally CMVT versus Sayre. Those will all be played tomorrow afternoon or evening.